I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about Poisson random variables. This is the fifth video in a five-part video uh, series about discrete random variables, including the most recent videos on Bernoulli and binomial random variables. Uh, Poisson random variables uh, round out the most predominantly used uh, distributions to model real-world data in the discrete uh, random variable framework. The next video after this, we'll be talking about continuous random variables. So the last video talked about binomial random variables, which were counting the number of successes out of some number of trials. Now there are other situations where the experiment really involves counting some number of something, but there's no clear uh, number of trials that were attempted. So as examples, if you ever think about counting the number of things, whatever that is, over a certain amount of time or a certain amount of space, then that is probably better represented by a Poisson random variable than any other random variables that we've discussed. So some realistic examples here uh, might be looking at the number of alpha particles emitted from a polonium bar in, say, an eight-minute period. Right? That would be a count, and there's no clear upper limit on how many uh, of those particles we could observe. Or the number of flaws in some kind of manufactured product, like coaxial cable. If we had, say, a 100 meters coaxial cable, how many flaws do we find in that cable? And again, here, there's sort of no clear upper limit on the number that we could find. Finally, uh, let's say the number of web page visits we have on a particular website in some amount of time, say 24 hours. So all three of these are examples of situations where you're counting the number of occurrence of some event over some amount of time or some amount of space. So we're going to use typically a Poisson random variable to model these kind of data. A Poisson random variable has a probability mass function of this form. The support for the probability for the Poisson random variable are the integers 0 on up to infinity. Again, this coincides with the no clear upper limit. The single parameter for a Poisson distribution is the rate parameter. Often we use lambda, the Greek letter lambda, to represent that rate parameter. Then the Poisson uh, probability mass function is e to the negative lambda, lambda to the x, divided by x factorial, where x is that realized value of the random variable. From this probability mass function, we can uh, find the expectation of the variance, and it turns out that these are both lambda. Now, I skipped a sentence there. If we are going to write down that a random variable has a Poisson distribution with a rate of lambda, then we write x tilde, PO for Poisson, lambda were the rate parameter. All right, since the rate parameter is also the mean, you might sometimes hear this parameter referred to as the Poisson mean parameter. Those are interchangeable. All right, so uh, the probability mass function uh, we have there written out. But here's an example. So let's suppose that we are an internet service provider and we're recording how many new customers in some geographical region sign up for new service on a daily basis. From historical records, we know that on average about 10 people sign up per day, and so we're going to use that as our rate for our mean parameter for the Poisson. Eventually, we're going to try to answer the question of, well, what's the probability that, say, more than, new, more than eight new accounts are initiated on a particular day? And so to start wrapping our head around this, one thing you might want to do is to just plot the probability mass function. So here's an example of that probability mass function. What we see here is that when the mean or the rate is 10, that it has a peak of 10 and the integer before that. So really, there's a peak at 9 and 10 for this example, and that's common uh, for other Poisson random variables with different means. This particular uh, probability mass function for a Poisson random variable starts at zero on the left-hand side, then goes by integers one, two, three, four, and so on. This graph ends at, what is it, uh, 30 there, but really it goes on forever. And the key is that that probability keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as we get to larger and larger and larger values. But there's always some probability of getting any particular number, even if that probability is infinitesimal. All right, so if we go back to that example of uh, trying to determine uh, the probability that more than eight new counts are uh, created, uh, we perhaps will let x be the number of new accounts that were initiated on that day, and then we're going to assume that x has a Poisson distribution with a rate of 10. And we can then use uh, the 
formula for a cumulative distribution function to figure out what the probability is that the number of accounts, that is, that x is greater than 8, well, that's 1 minus the probability that it's less than or equal to 8. And now we have it in the form of a cumulative distribution function. And now we can calculate the cumulative distribution function by simply summing the probability mass functions from 0 up into 8. And then we'll find that for this particular example, the probability that we have at least that we have more than 8, actually, is about 2 thirds, or 0.67. Now, we could do this by hand, but generally we'll use software to do these calculations. So as an example, we can do this in R. So in R, here's two different ways that we could possibly do the calculation. The first is similar to the way that we've done the formula above, where we take the probability mass function. Again, that the prefix there is a D, so D pois is the probability mass function for a Poisson random variable in R. We're going to evaluate that from the integers 0 up to 8. So that 0 colon 8 really creates a vector of values from 0 up to 8 and evaluates that probability mass function for each of those values. And we have lambda here, which is that rate parameter is 10. The alternative way of doing the calculation is to use the cumulative distribution function that R already has. And again, that is prefixed by a P. So P, pois, is the cumulative distribution function for a Poisson random variable. We just need now to put it 8 because we're going to calculate the probability that it's 8 or less and the rate parameter again is 10. And under either way of doing this calculation, we find that the probability is what? Oh, right, 2 thirds, just like we had above. All right, so uh, there are some nice properties of Poisson random variables when you're adding them together. So if you have independent Poisson random variables, each with their own rate parameter, lambda i, then the sum is another Poisson random variable, and the rate parameter for that sum is the sum of the rate parameters for the individual uh, Poisson random variables. One special case of this is that when all of those parameters have the same, when all those random variables have the same parameter, right, we call this identically distributed. So this is the scenario where this set or sequence is an independent and identically distributed set of Poisson random variables. In that situation, the formula is a little bit more succinct, right? That's a Poisson, when you take the sum of all of these Poisson random variables, then they are a Poisson random variable with mean n, which is the number that we've taken the sum of, times lambda. All right, we're going to use that in this example. So if we extend that uh, internet service provider idea and we say, well, how many uh, customers are going to sign up over two days rather than just one. Well, in that scenario, we are going to have, uh, what, two, if we assume that they're independent, then we have a Poisson random variable with a rate 10 for the first day, and we have a Poisson random variable with rate 10 for the second day. We didn't need to assume independence yet, but now if we take their sum, we have to assume independence in order to get a Poisson random variable back out. And the average on those two days is going to be 10. And so we can do the calculations here to determine the probability that there are at least that there are more than 16 that sign up. Now is a Poisson random variable with a rate of 20, and we can calculate the probability that it's greater than 16. That's just one minus the probability that it's less than or equal to 16. And again, we prefer just to have software do it for us. And so if we do that calculation in the software or any other way without making typos, we'll find that it's about 70 percent that more than 16 accounts will be activated over the course of two days. All right, now we're moving on to a manufacturing example. Suppose that there are 100 chips produced per day and 10% of these chips are defective. Then the question is, what's the probability that on a particular day there's no defectives that are found? This actually sounds a little bit more like a binomial random variable, right? We have a number of chips, that's 100, and we have 10% sorry, 1% of the chips that are uh, defective on average, right? So this actually sounds like a binomial random variable with n is 100 and p is 0 0.01. And now we can find out what the probability is that this binomial random variable is equal to zero. And so there it is, it's about 37%. So why is this in a Poisson talk? Well, this is in a Poisson talk because you can also think about this instead as the number of defective chips per day. Right. If you multiply 100 times 0.01, you get 1. So on average, there's one defective chip per day. And now it's a Poisson random variable with a rate parameter of 1. 
and we can calculate what's the probability that it is equal to zero, it turns out that that's about 0.37, or about the same as what we got under the binomial assumption. All right, so this is actually an example of a more general uh, result, and that general result is that you can actually use Poisson random variables to approximate binomial random variables, and sometimes that might be helpful. In particular, you can do this when the number of attempts is large, say more than 20, and the probability of success is relatively small, say less than 0.05. In that scenario, it turns out that that binomial random variable is very similar to a Poisson random variable whose mean or rate parameter is n times p. And what, what I mean by that is that when if you look at their probability mass functions, they're about the same. And so here's the two probability mass functions written out, but probably more importantly, we have this picture that shows you uh, how similar probability mass functions are, at least for the first few integers. It gets really boring after that, so I only did the first few. You can do the rest if you want to. Well, you couldn't, because there's an infinite number of them. But if you look here, there's actually two vertical lines at each integer. And one is for the binomial, the other for the Poisson, but they basically look identical. And so, again, if n is large and p is small, then you can approximate a binomial with the Poisson. So just to give another illustration of that, suppose you're a proofreader for a book. And when you're proofreading the book, what you notice is that on average, historically, you have two typos per page. And let's say, for simplicity, that every page has 1,000 word, words on it. Now you can think about uh, two, way, two different ways of modeling this. One is a binomial, where there's 1,000 words, and there's the probability of any individual word having a typo is 2 divided by 1,000. Or you can think about this as a Poisson random variable, where there's a page, and that page on average has two typos. Either way you do it, you'll find that the if we're trying any of the probabilities we're calculating, I know both these examples said what's the probability of no typos, but that was just for simplicity. Basically, any probability you calculate will be similar, very similar, between the Poisson and the binomial. So here's the binomial approach. We find that the probability is about, what, 0.1414. We round. If we do the Poisson approach, same thing, it's about 0.14. All right, so this was the fifth video in a five video series. Uh, the summary of all of those are that we talked about discrete random variables, we talked about uh, discrete versus continuous, and then we talked about discrete specifically in terms of their probability mass function, their cumulative distribution function, how to calculate expected values, how to calculate the variance and standard deviation. Then we looked particular in more depth at Bernoulli random variables, binomial random variables, and Poisson random variables because those are the most common uh, discrete random variables that are used to model real-world data. Next set of videos after this will be on continuous random variables where we will talk about uniform distributions and importantly the normal distribution. Hope to see you there.